The statement of financial position or balance sheet is a record of everything a business owns, its assets, and everything it owes, its liabilities, at a particular point in time. And so we've got an example here which we can work through each section and explain exactly what it means. So the fixed assets here appear right at the top. And as we've said, they're assets. So that means they're things that we own. But the fixed part means that they're things which tend to stay in the business for more than a year. So listed are a couple of examples. You might have machinery that's used in the production process. You might have um, buildings, premises where the business is operating. Add those together to get the, the total fixed assets. Now the current assets come next. And again, they are assets, so they are things that are owned by the business, but this time across less than a year. So they're constantly being used or sold. So some examples of that might be stock or inventory is another term for that, which is constantly being sold, you would hope, and then replenished. Cash at the bank, um, again, would be spent and then deposited again. And then we have debtors, or another term for that is receivables, which is money that is owed to us that is waiting to be paid. So that would be a current asset as well. Add those together to find the, the total current assets. Next, we've got current liabilities, which as they're liabilities, they're things that we owe, but they are settled within a year. So examples of that might be creditors, or another term for that would be payables. That's money that we owe to other businesses, uh, maybe things that we've purchased on trade credit, or overdrafts, agreed short-term overspends on our bank account, they would both be current liabilities that would come together to make our total current liabilities. And we'll just jump to the non-current liabilities next, which are um, liabilities, so they are things that we owe, but they are paid back over a longer period of time. So they're paid back over a period of more than a year, and so that would include long-term loans, mortgages, things like that. So now we've seen the different types of assets and liabilities that appear on the balance sheet. We can now look at some of these slightly more complex things which, which appear a little bit lower down, starting uh, by going one up and looking at the working capital. And that's sometimes actually called net current assets. There are a lot of things which have two terms to describe the same thing. And that's money which is available for the day-to-day -day running of the business. And the calculation to work that out is current assets minus current liabilities. So we can see with our 2020 figures here, the total current assets of £22,000 minus the current liabilities of £17,000 gives us our working capital of £5,000. The net assets next are everything a business owns minus everything it owes. So this is kind of the net worth of the business. If you add up all of the assets, both, both fixed and current, and take away all of the liabilities, both current and the non-current liabilities, you can see that um, we get our net assets figure, which in this case would be £125,000. And then finally, at the right at the bottom, we have our total equity figure, which is the total investment that's gone into the business. It's basically saying, where has the money come from to pay for all of this? So that would typically come from places like the owner's own savings, owner's capital, share capital, the sale of shares, reserves or retained profit from previous years trading. And assuming no mistakes have been made in putting together the balance sheet, the total equity must be equal to the net assets. So we can see that here, the total equity on this balance sheet is the same as the net assets in both years. And that's because the net value of everything that's owned by the business must have been paid for somehow. And that's what the total equity is showing is where has this money come from in order to pay for those net assets. So here we have an example of a business's income statement, or we sometimes call it a profit and loss account. And that's because it shows us that a business's profit or loss over a period of time, usually over the course of a year. And working from top to bottom here, just looking at the different elements of the income statement, starts off at the top with our revenue. 
And that's what we've seen. We've come across revenue before. That's the, the price times the quantity sold. That's all of the income received from selling your product. So imagine this business is a company that manufactures and sells shoes. Uh, then the revenue would be how many shoes they've sold multiplied by the price they're selling them for. Working down, the cost of sales next is the direct cost of making those goods. So that's mainly going to be the materials that have gone into making the product. So that's going to be things like the leather, the laces, the cost of the packaging, all those different things. So there are direct cost of sales come next. And you can see that the figure for that is in brackets to show that it's negative. It's a cost rather than an income. Then we've got gross profit going down next. And there's a formula for calculating gross profit. We take our revenue minus our cost of sales. So revenue minus cost of sales gives you gross profit. You so see you're taking all of your money coming in and you're minusing just the direct costs of making the product. Next, you've got your overheads. You might sometimes see these referred to as fixed overheads or expenses. Those are the things like rent, heating, lighting, equipment, the, all those other costs which aren't directly going into the making of the product but have to be paid as part of kind of the running costs for your factory where you're manufacturing the shoes. Uh, going down, you've got your operating profit, which again, you've got a formula for working out. You take your gross profit and you minus your overhead. So you can see here we've got a gross profit of £60,000 minus our overheads of £40,000 to give us operating profit of £20,000 in 2020. And moving down again, you then go to your um, other uh, costs. So it might be kind of finance costs, income, could be taxation, might fit into here as well. And those are the costs which are not related to the usual trading activities of the business. So you might have some of those other costs which you know they're nothing to do with making the shoes. You might have taken out a loan and have interest to pay on that loan. You might have some investments which are providing you with income that are nothing to do with the, the selling of your shoes and so they come below the operating profit. And so then finally you take those other costs away if they are costs or if there's their income you add them on but generally speaking you're going to be taking them away because usually for most businesses you, they're going to have some loans to pay interest on they might, you might like i said say have taxation appearing in there as well and so you would take those away this these brackets again show it's negative to get your net profit figure at the bottom of your income statement so these balance sheets and income statements are key financial documents which have to be published publicly by law in the case of public limited companies. So shareholders and potential shareholders and actually any other possible stakeholder groups can then review company performance. And to give a few examples of what some of these different stakeholder groups might be looking out for in these documents, we would have shareholders who will in the short term be interested in profits in order to fund dividend payments, but they also want to see the potential for future growth to see longer term gains and increasing share prices as well. You'd see suppliers who will be looking out for assessing the ability to pay when negotiating payment terms and also the likelihood of further orders into the future. We'd have employees that would be wanting to see how successful the company is to inform pay and rewards negotiations. And then we'd have creditors who might want to see how able the business is to repay money um, that they are lending to them.